Hey, everybody. Thank you for coming back to another WeGo podcast, uh, YouTube video. Actually, WeGo YouTube video. I'm just so used to saying podcast. But thank y'all for tuning in. I just wanted to pop in real quick to give y'all a video. Hopefully, I'll be popping back in later. But I decided to take a break from being on that road and pop in and talk about some things. Um, another part of my house that you'll see because like I told you, so where I'm sitting right now, right in front of me is the fireplace TV type thing. And I don't feel like picking up this chair behind me and positioning it, positioning, positioning it over there. So I was like, uh-uh, I'm about to move this tray and we go with my computer and we're going to do it from here. So first up, y'all, let's talk about our auntie, Wendy. So shout out to my boo, Carlos Harris, for sending me this article I was watching TV the other night and the Wendy Williams uh, trailer documentary came up and my husband was like, oh, a documentary is coming out about Wendy. So um, I was like, yeah, I, I know. So we plan on watching that together. But we have an update from Wendy's family. So according to People, Wendy Williams enters wellness facility due to overall health issues. The TV personality is seeking help to manage her health as she hopes to make a major comeback in her career. Wendy Williams is taking steps toward getting her health back on track. The 58-year-old TV personality has reportedly entered a wellness facility seeking help as she hopes to manage her overall issues. She is taking some time to focus on her health and wellness as she prepares for a major comeback for the next level in her career with the Wendy Experience podcast, a press release from her publicist, Sean Zanotti states, Miss Williams is being treated by a team of some of the best doctors in the world. We ask for your prayers and well wishes during this time. Earlier this year, Williams' ongoing health concerns previously kept her from returning to host the Wendy Williams show, which was delayed twice before Leah Remney stepped in to guest host. Other stars were later tapped to do the same, including Michael Rappaport, Whitney Cummings, and Jerry Springer. R.I.P. to Jerry Springer. Sherry Shepard proved to be a fan favorite among the guest hosts, even scoring season high ratings during her initial stint last November. It was later announced that the 54-year-old was given her own namesake talk show, Sherry, that would take over Williams' program's time slot. With that, Williams' own show concluded after more than a decade on air. She understands why this decision was made from a business point of view. Howard Bagman, a rep for Williams, said in a statement in February. She has been assured by Denbar and Mercury that, that should her health get to a point where she can host again, and should her desire be that she hosts again, that she would be back on TV at that time. So I'm sending prayers up. Like, I know people say that in general, prayers up, sending well wishes, but honestly, truly sending prayers um, up to Wendy and to her family. I can't even imagine what that must feel like. She wants to be back on TV. I believe we saw that in the trailer that's coming out in the uh, documentary that she wants to be back on TV and to not be able to is, I just can't even imagine. I'm wondering what they're focusing on because I thought I read somewhere that it was cognitive issues that they were working on. So I'm, I'm like, well, I'm wondering what is being affected with her specifically. Um, I thought I saw that. I didn't see that in the People article. It just says overall health issues. So my prayers, seriously, for real, go out to Auntie Wendy. I would love nothing more than for her to be back on our screens, on a podcast, looking and feeling her best. I want to see this documentary, but I'm also preparing myself to be sad in a way, you know what I mean? Because it's one thing if Wendy was back on TV, back on I mean, on a podcast, on air somewhere right now, healthy, happy, doing what she loved to do. But we haven't got that resolved yet. We're just not hearing she's in a facility. So for this documentary to drop, and I know it's real life, right? When we watch scripted shows, we know that in the end, no matter how bad it gets during the show, in the end, it's all supposed to work out. And we're supposed to get a happy ending. So watching this documentary, knowing that right now, it's not necessarily her happy ending yet, meaning her being back on TV and what have you, it's kind of sad. So I'm looking 
forward to watching it, but also not looking forward to watching it, if you know what I mean, because I hate to see her in that space. So again, prayers, love, support, everything goes out to Auntie Wendy. I'm telling you, when she gets back, if she gets back on TV, podcast, the airways, whatever, y'all, we're going to celebrate. Um, next, next up, let's talk about somebody that has been in the press lately, Miss Tiffany Haddish. Now, I'm just reading y'all the article. I'm not talking about nothing outside of that. Just letting y'all know for those of y'all that haven't seen it and for those of y'all that have seen it, I want to know what y'all think. So this is according to Radar Online. The title is Pathetic. Sorry, y'all, I'm spitting. Uh, pathetic. Tiffany had a slam for trip to Israel to see war with her own eyes and meet her future man. Comedian Tiffany Haddish faced intense backlash on social media after she announced she was on the way to Israel for an educational trip. RadarOnline.com has learned. Haddish went live on Instagram her business class in her business class seats on the airplane. Uh, the 44-year-old entertainer said she was on a 16-hour flight that departed from Los Angeles. The comedian said she planned to learn and see with my own eyes. I'm going to go meet my future man out there. I'm out. I'm going to the Holy Land. I suggest you all do it. On Instagram Live, Haddish was seen holding a glass with orange liquid. She told her fans it was orange juice and not a mimosa. Tiffany's been arrested twice for DUI. The first incident went down in Georgia, and the case is headed to trial this year. Months later, the girl's trip star was arrested in L.A. after being found asleep behind the wheel of her car while in the middle of the street. She recently reached a plea deal in the L.A. case and avoided any jail time. So two DUI cases. One in Georgia that's going to trial later this year, and then one in L.A. where she reached a plea deal, and so she doesn't have to do jail time for that one. Tiffany told her fans, on my way to Tel Aviv, then to Jerusalem, then I'm going to the Dead Sea and going to get me some, going to have some fun. Yeah, it's going to be great. Then I'm going to learn about the politics. A. Hey. Who said I wasn't going to Gaza? She said in response to a fan's remark on the live. I said I'm going to see with my own eyes. Got to go to Israel first. And isn't Gaza and Israel, she asked, ain't it all on the same continent, the same little piece of land and surrounded by water? This is sociology, she added. This is an educational trip for me. I want to go get educated. I want to see what's really going on. And I want to learn how it started and why. For me, I've been seeing mixed commentary about it. Some are saying they don't see anything wrong with her saying she wants to see it with her own eyes and see the war going on. Others are saying if you're going to Israel, you're only going to get Israel's perspective of it, but you're not, or what's happening in Israel, you're not going to get what's happening in Gaza. And I believe that's why she said, who said I wasn't going to Gaza. She also continued, I want to see where Jesus walked. I want to see all the stuff everywhere they talked about in the Bible. I want to see all of that. So if it's in the Bible, I'm probably going to be there. Haddish found out she was Jewish later in life. She had a uh, bar mitzvah at 40. The comedian was criticized on social media all over the trip. So one upset fan wrote, really, Tiff? Wow. Honestly, there's so much I could say but this is heartbreaking. You are not a safe space and your instincts are inherently flawed and dangerous. Somebody else said, Tiffany Haddish is joining Michael Rappaport, Rappaport as another idiot in Israel to lie for the Israeli government. And y'all, I'm just reading y'all what the comments are saying. Somebody else said, the situation is heart-wrenching, resembling a scene from a horror movie with the tragic killing of thousands of Palestinians. Amidst this, she approaches the trip as a leisurely paid vacation which I find utterly disheartening, another wrote. Then one former fan wrote, Tiffany Haddish been, in caps, on my mute list because she represents so much of what is wrong with our culture. So those are just some of the things that people are saying about her posting uh, about her trip. Some people are saying that she's a little too casual, a little too flippant, saying, I'm going to go get my man, I'm going to go get me some, and I suggest y'all do the same. So what do y'all think? Again, I'm just reading the commentary and what was reported by Radar Online. Next up, let's talk about Miss Larsa, Miss Larsa Pippen. So, child, Miss Larsa, for somebody who didn't do a lot of talking, now all of a sudden she's talking. Larsa Pippen reveals her one regret from public breakup with Marcus Jordan before reconciliation. Uh, this is according to page six. Larsa 
admitted she was being too hasty when she wiped all signs of Bo Marcus Jordan from her Instagram during their blank and miss it breakup last week. She said it was an Insta regret. I feel like I was very emotional. I wish I didn't delete those photos. The Real Housewives of Miami star told Teddy Mellencamp and Tamara Judge on Wednesday's episode of their podcast, Two, two, two Teas in a Pot. And I'm sorry, y'all, Larkis didn't say it was a Lark. Larsa didn't say it was an Insta regret. Page six said that. But she did say she was feeling very emotional and she wished that she didn't delete the photos. She went on to say, what? Page six. Why do page six have Pippa 58? Pippin 58. Larsa is not 58, is she? Isn't she 48? Because I thought she was only technically a year older than me. I'm 46. So I'll be 47 in April. April 4th, 4 4 7 7. Aries in the house. But um, I know Larsa is not 58. Anyway, Larsa said that she deleted her images with Marcus so quickly that she didn't even archive them. I couldn't archive them. I just deleted them. I was just emotional and impulsive, I guess. I'm a cancer, so I'm an emotional person. So I feel like if you're not loving me the right way, I can distance myself and catch a beat. The Bravo Liberty also clarified that she and Marcus, who started hanging out September of 2022 and confirmed they were dating last January, never actually broke up and instead just took a breather from their romance. We didn't break up. We kind of needed to just take a beat, gather our thoughts, and see if this relationship, you know, what's going to happen in the future. It was like we spent a lot of time together, and I feel like this was the point of we're going to be together and get engaged or start working to the next phase, or we're going to break up. It's that phase of making the right decision for your relationship. Larsa admitted that they had not been in a great place for about a month and were not seeing eye to eye. So she said she was hasty and post and deleting the pictures. She wished she had not. They never even broke up. They were just taking a breather. So how long did that last? Because that was like a few days before Valentine's Day. And then the next thing you know, paparazzi happens to catch them out I believe on Valentine's Day and she's wearing a big rock on her finger I know on Marisol and uh, Alexia's podcast a I por favor they question whether or not the relationship was even real and Larsa responded to that basically like she's so disappointed in her cast members you know um I don't know and y'all did see the reports about Marcus having an outburst uh, at the Real Housewives of Miami reunion so bad that it caused the ladies to see him differently. So whatever it was he said, uh, it's supposed to be so bad that they saw him differently. And I guess we would think differently if we heard it or saw it. I think I saw somewhere that it wasn't filmed. So I'm like, well, is anybody going to come out and say what it is? But anyway, they're not broke up. They never broke up. They just took a breather. She was being hasty because she's a cancer. She's emotional. And if you ain't loving her like she needs to be loved, baby, she's going to take a beat. So Larkis is here to stay for now. I want to end on this. I thought this was funny. Page six caption. Kelly Rowland's rep speaks out on singers today show walk off after Hoda Kotb offers to share a dressing room. This is what Kelly's rep had to say. After 28 years of knowing Kelly Rowland, I'm, I'm sorry, after 28 years of knowing her, Kelly Rowland remains one of the kindest, most amicable humans I have ever met and have had the blessing to represent. Yvette Noel Shore told Entertainment Tonight in a statement on Tuesday. That was it. I said, come on, Kelly, for not addressing it. That's right. You, you know your place because you have earned your spot, Miss Roland. You don't have to address that foolishness. But I thought that was really funny. Like, hmm, that's a good one. She's one of the most kindest, amicable humans I've ever met. Period. So shout out to Kelly Roland and who she is and um the fact that she knows who she is and knows what she's deserving of y'all I will talk to y'all a little later today hopefully I'm about to get back on this road and pick up and drop off some people y'all I'm trying to just push through you know what's funny I'm a people person I would say love having conversation love having dialogue the two places I do not 
is when I'm at the gym and when I am doing my gig work, picking up people and dropping them off. And it seems like me picking the people up, they want to have a conversation. And I can tell you the ones that want to talk. You know, I've heard a lot of passengers um, complain. I've seen a lot and I've heard a lot of passengers complain about their uh, rideshare drivers wanting to talk to them and the passenger just wants to chill out. And child, I don't want to talk. When you get in, I say, so-and-so to confirm. you. I say, hello, good afternoon, good, good morning. I don't drive at night. Confirm who you are. I confirm your destination because you wouldn't believe the amount of people that will just jump in a car, not looking to see if it's the same, if it's the license plate, if it's even the make and model of the car. And if you don't confirm it, you be then took them somewhere that wasn't their ride or what have you. But I already know, because I've been doing this on and off since 2017, I already know these signs. If if you get in and I say, hey, Mr. or hey, Beth, Beth, where did I get that, Beth? Hey, Bethany, why did I pick her? I'll say, hey, Cherie, 7695 Notting Hill Road. She'll say yes. And I'll say, okay. And that's it. When someone says, so how's your day go? How's your day going so far? It's about somebody about to give me the life story. Somebody about to have a conversation. But I, I, like I said before, I've, I'm trying to look at it like sometimes people just need somebody to talk to. But it's interesting because I've had a lot of people tell me maybe they just sense that they can talk to you or your spirit is good or what have you. But I noticed that when drivers want to talk, people don't ever say maybe they just sense that the person getting in, that their spirit is good and maybe they just need to talk. Seems like it only works that way for passengers. Also, if you are ordering a ride share ride, please look at the address that you, you, the passenger input. So if you input one, two, three, four, ABC way, Baltimore, Maryland, I'm pulling up to one, two, three, four, ABC way, Baltimore, Maryland. I do not know that you actually meant to put four, five, six, seven, ABC way. I don't know that because I don't know you. And you have not sent a note or a message in the app. I had a person who the GPS or the address they input was literally across the street from where they were. And there was like a median. So you'd have to go up and go all the way around to get on the other side of the street. So I pull up in front of the home whose address was input in the app. And then I get a message saying, where are you at? When I tell you it, that irks my nerves and the hairs on my arms stand up, where are you at? So I type back because I'm parked. Because also, just so y'all know, if y'all send a message through the app, it won't even, if, if it senses, if your car is not in park, the driver, you can't respond back. So if I'm on the highway or on my way to you, I can't respond back. Um, so I sent a message and I said, I'm at the address that was input for the pickup. He then says, I'm across the street. Okay. Then I was like, Taria, just go over there. So I was getting ready to type in, I'm on my way to you. But he ends up coming across the street and he goes, and he had an attitude. I mean, the GPS, I mean, every time I input the address, it always sends people over here, but I'm across the street. And I said, well, the driver wouldn't know that. So you need to let the driver know, hey, I input the address as this because the address I'm at actually doesn't come up. So this is where I am. Because me as a driver, I appreciate that. How the heck would I know that you're across the street? So look at the address or if y'all are just clicking location and not inputting an address, Make sure you see the location that you're clicking and you are where, where, where the location you're clicking at. Because you could click location and say if you're in a strip mall, it's going to show you in front of Lovely D's nails, but you're actually at the bank. And I know because that happened to me yesterday. I pull up to the address and it's the address for the entire strip mall. And actually their location said the address and said Lovely D's nails, but they were at the bank. Then they get in the car. Ugh. Check this out. 
me as a gig worker. What I want to do is do the best uh, to my ability. I want to give 100% customer service. So I'm going to show up at the address you input. I'm not one of those drivers that if I can't find you after a second, I cancel. No, I didn't drove here. Somebody need to get in this car, period. The cancellation fee ain't worth it to me. I want the money, right? So I'm going to do my best, but it's not always on the driver. It's on the passenger too. So just some different things that um, y'all should look out for. And y'all, please, when y'all get in Uber and Lyft, please look at the license plate before you get in. You have no idea. People will jump in and be like, oh, it said a silver car. I could be taking you anywhere. A couple of years ago, people were buying fake Uber and Lyft stickers um, and putting them in their cars, in their windows, and then going down to um, bar areas and picking up women. And because women were just getting in because it said Uber and Lyft, they weren't even looking at the make and model of the car. So the stickers aren't always the thing because I've had people tell me, you don't have your sticker up. I said, do you have a picture of the car and the license plate in me? Because some of y'all, and one more thing, some of y'all don't have pictures on your profile, so I don't even know who I'm looking for, but y'all know y'all are looking for me, right? So let us work together to make your ride a great one. All right, y'all. I'll talk to y'all later for real. Bye, y'all.